Hello. My name is Gabe Rosenhaus. And I'm Matt Sykes. Welcome. And we're part of the Container Networking Engineering Team. Um, yeah, sure. So most of you probably already know the pitch. You know, why, why are people looking to network their containers? What do they get out of it? What are the shortcomings of what we have today with Cloud Foundry in terms of connectivity between containers? And we kind of tried to summarize that here in one little bit. Um, essentially, what we've got today is we've got a model where users come in, workloads come in through a front-end router. The router then finds the container instance um, that's hosting your application. It dispatches it um, inside the container. But if that container then needs to talk to some other deployed application, some other container in the Cloud Foundry network, the only real way you have today to do that, make that work, is to come back around through the front door. So you basically hit your load balancer, you hit your proxies, you hit the Go router, and you get back to the container that you actually wanted to hit. And it's kind of um, obtuse. It adds a huge expense for the round trip. Um, it also forces you to expose um, routes to your application on the back end that you may not otherwise want to expose. So what we really want is we want to have a model where you come in through the router, you can access your front end apps, but those applications can then come directly to the back end that you're trying to keep secret or private or secure or whatever you want. Something that you want to just manage so that you don't expose it to the whole wide world. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with container networking. More explicitly, we have a, a, a set of goals that we're looking to deliver in this project um, for users and for operators. All right? um, we're going to try to talk through some of these things and, and give examples of, of, of how we're doing it. And we're kind of hoping that throughout this discussion, um, if there's questions, comments, concerns, you kind of let us know so we can have that conversation either after the pitch or during Q&A or out in the halls, whatever it might be. So in terms of the container networking project in general, um, we have a set of small, we have a very small set of goals that we're looking to get to. So for users, we want to deliver a solution that allows direct layer three addressability without NAT between all connected peers. So what that means explicitly is that if you have two instances, two containers, right, of the same application or other applications, you can uniquely address them and send requests to them without having to go through the entire routing tier, right? So when you receive a request now, you know explicitly who it's from in terms of the address, and you have some notion of the source, you have some notion of you know, who you're talking to. Within the container, we're looking to have a single network interface. So today, what you have in, in, in the garden containers that exist is you have a single network interface that you can receive your application requests on, that's great. What most container networking models end up doing today, if you look at Docker, for instance, if you have a plugin or you add another network, or even on um, some uh, VM machines, if you add another network, what you end up finding is you have another network interface sitting inside, your inside of your container, your host. That adds a fair bit of complexity and com complications around determining, you know, what addresses you should listen on, for instance. Does everybody do an add or any, or do you listen on one side? Which one's private, which one's public? Most people don't want to care. So by surfacing a single interface with a single address, it's very easy for people to basically come up, listen, listen on one address, and just get going. In terms of connectivity between applications, we want to be able to allow you to specify a policy, a way of describing who can talk to whom, right, and how. So those are the goals that we have for users. So we have basic connectivity with direct access, single network interface, and policy-based connectivity rules. Now for operators, we want to make sure that when you're running Cloud Foundry, since we are multi-cloud, and we support many different cloud providers, right? You could bring your own, you can go someplace else. We want to give you the opportunity to actually choose the networking technology that's going to be in place um, for, for your network, right? So we need some level of sensibility there. We want to ensure that when you deploy this network technology, that within your infrastructure, within your deployment, you have the ability to lock things down, to explicitly control where packets are allowed to go, right? So we want to make sure that that's there. And a stretch goal or something that we hear a lot, right, something that we really want to have happen is we want to be able to say that as packets traverse the network, right, the packets that are coming from containers, we want to be able to say, you know, with certainty, the source of that packet. So we can tie it back in a multi-tenant world exactly to the application that generated that packet. So if you end up getting, you know, a, a huge flood of traffic from an application, you can track it back. Or if you find out that there's an attack on a foreign web service, right, 
and you want to find out who's actually causing that in a multi-tenant public cloud, you have the ability to do that. So those are some of the goals. All right. So how do we get there? So we have five basic topics that we're going to try to cover today. We're going to talk about the technology and sensibility. We're going to talk a little bit about address management, right? Um, policy expression for Cloud Foundry, and some ideas that we have there, and we're looking for lots of feedback on this because this is a probably the most intensive um, portion of, the, of, of this presentation is to get some feedback on the policy pieces. Well, when you want to control who can talk to whom, um, it can become very detailed and very, you know, basically it's kind of obtuse, right? So we're looking to have a simple solution for that um, that still meets requirements people have. So we're looking to cover that today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we have for a batteries included solution um, in the NetMan release. So what's going to happen with Open Source Cloud Foundry just for connectivity and how policy enforcement will work with that built-in provider. And the last little bit we're going to talk about is um, some, um, some ideas around how we could discover uh, endpoints, things like naming, so that if you have connectivity from A to B, um, how do you actually find out where B is in terms of addresses and how do you access those things. So that's kind of what we're going to cover today. So you just, if you were in this room a few minutes ago, you heard a talk about Garden. Um, and you heard about Garden Run C, which is the next version of the back end for the Garden API. Um, what our team has been working on um, the last few months has been a adapter between Garden Run C and the Container Networking Initiative specification for um, wiring up containers to networks. Um, and what that does, what we've got is this, this adaptive layer that lets us drive via the CNI plugin interface any number of different CNI plugins which are available. If you, um, if you look this up on GitHub, you can see that there are a number of existing reference specification, implement, like reference implementations of CNI plugins. And um, we have this thing uh, called Netman Release. It's a Bosch release that you can go look up today. And it uses the Flannel CNI plugin and provides layer three connectivity between containers. Um, it doesn't meet all of the goals that, we've, that Matthew went over, but that's what our team is going to be working off of going forward. All right, so to dig in a little bit to the address management piece, um, what we have here is we want to demonstrate you know, really in, in picture form the ultimate goal, which is given a graph of containers, we want to be able to allow full connectivity between those graphs and unique addressability. So what you notice here is that we actually have four boxes. They look like servers, but they're, they could be anything you want. They could be containers. Um, and we have four unique IP addresses between those things. Now, going back to what I said earlier, part of the reason why we're looking for this unique IP is it makes a lot of things simpler in terms of um, what your application has to understand, right? Again, with one, one address, one, you know, one interface, you only have one place to listen. What's also interesting about that is if you end up having to roll your own for things like service discovery, you know very easily which IP address to expose, right? So long and the short of it is, Across the container network, we're looking for a flat address space, fully interconnected with unique addresses. And that's the ultimate goal there. Um, and this is related to CNI in that the CNI plugins, the way they actually work today is when Garden comes down through the CNI adapter to actually bring up uh, a network interface on the container, we're pointed to the network namespace of that container. And we're allowed to essentially create all the artifacts that are required to bring that network or bring that container onto a network. So the address management pieces of it and the technology that are used are both baked into CNI. So this is the first primary extension point that we have for Cloud Foundry networking. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about policy. It's gonna be a few slides. So there's two basic roles that we think about, types of people that are sort of users of the policy work. There's the developer who just wants to push their app and have it be run for them on the cloud. They want this to be connected to the other apps that it needs to talk to, maybe microservice applications directly um, without going through the, the router. Um, they want that to be easy to use. And then there are operators. Um, they're administering the Cloud Foundry and the network, and they probably have concerns about security and compliance. And so what, what the goal of this effort is to figure out how to make this 
easy for developers to just get a simple CF push experience, the self-service thing that's made CF really easy to use for, for a developer, um, but also not scare away the people who are concerned about security. So you can think about, you can think about policy this user experience issue on a couple different axes. One of them is the sort of implicit versus explicit access. Do you want to default allow connectivity between applications or do you want there to be a default deny and the user or operator has to explicitly say which application can talk to which other application or which Cloud Foundry space could talk to some other Cloud Foundry space. There's also the axis of granularity. Are you talking about apps or are you talking about spaces, or are you talking about orgs, in terms of the, the units the, the, when you discuss policy? So we can imagine some s simple, implicit default policy, which is that every single application within an organization, a Cloud Foundry org, can talk to, its, to everything else in that org. There's no restrictions at all, except that you can only talk to things within the same org. And then sort of going down the granularity scale, you could imagine the same kind of thing, but only within a space, and that spaces themselves you couldn't talk to things outside of the space, except via, of course, going out through the, the router and coming back in the, the way it currently works. And then going down again in terms of granularity, you can imagine that instances of a single application could talk to each other, but there's no in, inter-app communication. And that's all sort of implicit. There's no additional user experience because these rules are just applied automatically. And then in terms of going on the more explicit side of things, you can imagine that a user might be able to write a rule that says org A can talk to org B, or all the applications in org A can talk to all the applications in org B. And again, going down the granularity scale, maybe a space can talk to an org, or all the apps within a space can talk to all the other apps in another space. And then you can just imagine an app to app granularity, where the default is don't allow any communication unless I explicitly say app A can talk to app B. And then finally, in terms of the version three cloud controller API, there's this smaller unit than an application, which is a process or a process type. And so you can imagine maybe writing rules like a process type can talk to another process type. And finally, we can add on top of this the concept of ports and protocols. So there's this question of what should Cloud Foundry support? Like what should the user experience be? What should you be able to do as a user or operator? And so it's gonna be some area of this graph. We don't really know. Some collection of these things covering some region will be the thing that Cloud Foundry supports, at least out of the box. And we don't know what that is yet, and we really want to hear from people if they have opinions about this sort of thing. Um, well, you'll see a slide at the very end about office hours, but we're gonna have office hours tomorrow afternoon. It'd be great if you came and told us what you thought about this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, just one comment. One the one thing I did want to bring about this is one of the initial proposals that we had, um, which was kind of a middle ground, was that by default, um, applications within the same space would have connectivity, and then policy controls would be on top of that. Um, it's, it's kind of a middle of the ground like approach. Uh, it's not um, agreed to, it's not kind of where everybody wants to be, um, but that's just kind of an idea of, of where you could start with something, which is if I push two applications, they can talk as long as they're in the same space. As soon as you cross spaces, they're gone. So just that's an idea of like an implicit control point, just a concrete way. So in addition to those sort of high level concepts, there's this question of like, where does this stuff actually store? Does a user put this into the Cloud Controller API? Is there gonna be some separate networking API that controls this stuff? Maybe they express it via the service model for Cloud Foundry with service bindings. Um, we've talked about and thought about these approaches. Um, we haven't made any firm decisions yet, but again, we're looking for feedback on this. Um, so here's an option or an example of how you might do explicit rules. Um, the, the top line kind of is the most generic case where I could write some CF command line thing that allows traffic from some source application in a space and org to another destination application over a space and org using a particular protocol and a particular port. So just to make this a little more concrete, I push a web UI app and an inventory app and a checkout app that makes some kind of shopping cart experience, and I allow explicitly traffic from the web UI to the inventory app, and I allow traffic from the web UI to the checkout, and then I allow traffic from the checkout to some credit card sensitive PCI thing that's maybe in a different space, and those three allow rules together allow me to run my complete web uh, e-commerce application. Um, there's a question as far as, 
who should be allowed to write these allow rules. Um, if you're, maybe if you're a space developer in both the space that contains the, the source and the destination, that, that's enough of a permission. Maybe you need some kind of particular network admin scope. Um, those are open questions as far as the, the permissions to do this. Another iteration on this might be something that's a little more self-service. When I push an app, perhaps I can expose a named endpoint. And I can say, this inventory app is available on port 443 uh, over TCP, and I'm giving it this name. And then when I push the web UI app, the thing that consumes that inventory backend, I say bind it to that, bind it to the inventory. Um, and that would be a, perhaps a nicer user experience. It would make it a little simpler to do microservices with CF push. So again, we're kind of like kicking these ideas around, and we're interested in people's feedback about what they might want to use. Um, and we're certainly not seeing these as the only two options. Um, finally, this gets a little more complicated with Cloud Controller version 3, as I mentioned earlier. You'd have, maybe you specify process types as opposed to applications. Um, and there's a question, again, in terms of like implicit versus explicit, whether there should be some kind of default allow rule, all the processes within an application should be a little able to talk or not. So to sort of summarize all this stuff, in terms of just kind of like commentary on this. With a default deny rule, you're gonna have to write a lot of explicit allow rules in order to set up your application. And doing stuff bidirectionally, if you have a callback between some front end and you've got a if this then that application that calls you back, gets a little messy. Um, but with a default allow rule, if everything's allowed to talk to each other, then maybe the security guys are gonna get a little concerned. And they're gonna say, well, why do these things, why can they talk by default? I, I want to know explicitly where traffic is going. So this question of usability versus security, we'd like some, some input from people to hear what you think. OK, I'm going to keep talking about policy enforcement. So there's this overall goal with Cloud Foundry. We, we want to be able to provide some included batteries that enforces policy for you, but you should be able to replace them. So the open source thing should just work, but if you have some proprietary network fabric that you want to use, um, that's OK, too. So the open source solution that we're gonna, we think we're going to begin working on, we've, we've done some work on already, and the flannel release is the, the foundation of this, is a VXLAN overlay network. Um, so what this does is it takes the traffic from an application and encapsulates it and adds a tag to the front of that packet before it goes out on the wire. And that tag has something that represents the identity of the application. And th what this lets, lets us do is it separates the identity of an application from its address on the network. This pays dividends with policy enforcement. So to make this a little more concrete for those of you who are not already networking experts, um, it kind of looks like this. You've got your application data is got its own IP header, its own UDP header, but it's encapsulated within the body of an outer packet that has a tag on it. And so each CF application would be assigned some unique tag and then before the traffic leaves the container host, before it leaves the Diego cell, it would be tagged with its identity. And then when traffic arrives at a container, um, it can be filtered based on the identity of the source of the packet. Getting a bit more into the details, um, VXLAN has a few different places where we might put this tag. And um, it has a 24-bit thing called a VNI. It has a 16-bit group policy identifier, which is a very new extension to the specification. Um, depending on how many bits you allow for the tag, that puts an upper limit on how many different applications you can deploy to your Cloud Foundry using this approach. Um, and you, we can imagine a few different ways of uh, encoding the identity of the application into the, the tag on the packet, um, and perhaps splitting it based on some concept of a tenant versus an application that's owned by that tenant to support multi-tenant cases. Um, we're not set in stone on this stuff. Again, we kind of want to hear from people if they have opinions. Yeah, a couple, just a couple of side effects that like people may need to be aware of for this kind of thing is that if you start to actually encap everything and it's a non-standard end cap, right, then you have some interoperability issues. If you end cap everything leaving the container, then you have to basically decap on the way out, which means you have another filter before you actually leave your Cloud Foundry environment. Uh, if you have existing v VXLAN overlays and VNIs are actually reserved depending on how you do routing, et cetera, you may have to you know, segregate some of those things and actually isolate those. So there's a lot of little things about this proposal that people need to be aware of, um, and, but it's something that would be there out of the box 
So it, it's it's a starting point. So to give a little bit of a overview of how this might work with Cloud Foundry, um, you can imagine the user or perhaps Cloud Controller itself driving some policy brain, some central controller that, that stores the rules, the intended rules that the user has about which apps can talk to other apps or spaces can talk to apps or whatever you want. Um, and that there's, there's a component which we're starting to call Netman that stays in sync with that, with that brain and has the, the local copy of those rules that are relevant to the cell that it's running on. Um, and, and that Netman program is gonna be actually responsible for doing two different things. One of them is driving CNI plugins to set up network connectivity in the first place. And it's also going to be responsible for driving policy con controls on the local cell. But because we're, we've got these three different API boundaries, this allows for extensibility. If you wanna replace these batteries with something else, um, you can do that by making use of the CNI API, of the policy API that we specify that Netman drives, and by the, the brain itself. And this type of solution should, we hope, allow for um, extensible different types of custom network setups for um, people who are not content with the, the batteries that we're building. Last major thing uh, was a discussion a little bit about uh, discovery. So <clears throat> one of the things that's interesting about when you build uh, container networks and you have the ability to uh, identify sources and targets when you um, declaratively, when you actually push your applications, is you still have the problem of actually finding them at runtime. And discovery is, a, is kind of a, a big deal. And most of the uh, solutions that exist today provide some level of support to help application developers find that stuff out, either through uh, the environment or through DNS. Um, so we've kicked around for a little while uh, the notion of trying to use DNS for some of these things. Um, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's not currently on the roadmap, but we're looking for lots of opinions from people right, on where we should go. Uh, one of the options was take those names that we were talking about for explicit policy before, where you labeled it backend and you gave it the, the, uh, the port, et cetera. Make, take that bind name and use that, something you can reference in DNS. Um, another approach is we do nothing for you. Um, since you have a single interface, you can get the IP yourself, and if you want to roll your own service discovery, you certainly can. Um, or if you're using a library in your application that allows you to essentially register, uh, you can do that. Um, those are options. Um, but, um, yeah, we're looking for some input here. Um, I personally feel like uh, discovery is something that uh, is, is kind of important. Uh, having a network without being able to find your target is really only part of the solution. Uh, so if you have feedback, come on in. Uh, we're, we, we're open to it. And then, yeah, we're at the end. I mean, this is really the call for action, um, right? Uh, please come on and get involved. We've been uh, around now since the beginning of the year. Uh, we have a Slack channel. We get a little bit of action in there. Um, but we would really, really welcome uh, some people kind of expressing uh, your use cases and what you need out of this. Uh, we have some code that's already out there today. Um, we have two releases, an old one and uh, a new Netman release that allows connectivity, so you can play with it, deploy it, and explore it. Um, and, you know, finally, you know, we went through the five things that we're thinking about right now. That's not an exhaustive list, um, but we're looking at that being enough to get started. So if that's not enough to get started for people, what are we missing, right? That's kind of where we are. Um, yeah, and then Gabe, if you want to talk about that. More stuff if you're interested in container networking. We're having office hours tomorrow, and um, there's also this recently added thing about CNI and OCI. Um, not really sure what it is, but I'm going to attend. So thank you all. Questions? Yeah, questions front. Right. So, so yeah. So, so the, the the two points were the things that this 
Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. The two points that we made from the question were, one of the things that's really missing is IPv6 support. Um, noted, I think that's a larger effort within Cloud Foundry. Uh, I think the overlay then, you know, within container to container, I don't see why a network provider, the plugin, could not support IPv6 if they chose to. But outside of Cloud Foundry, or like within the fabric of Cloud Foundry right now, it's IPv4. So I think it's a larger work effort. Um, the, the other piece was around multi-data center and extending the, the network. And again, I think that's where the extensibility comes into play, where the network that you have between the two, depending on the technology that you use, you could federate and bridge. You could add your own routing rules to do that. So if what's battery, you know, batteries included, I don't think we're ever going to try to support all the enterprise use cases you have, multi-data center, DR, and everything else. And that's really why those plug points are there, right? We really want to be able to get to that. Now, multi-cloud foundry is kind of an interesting one, right? Multi-cloud foundry is where you have, you'll, you may end up at the point where you have two policy engines. And I don't know really how to solve that problem. So that'd be an interesting conversation to have during office hours. Or if you have any ideas, that would be, I think that'd be really welcome if we'd hear those. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is completely separate from router. This, that's actually one of the things that we should have probably talked about. The way the router works today is the components within Cloud Foundry actually advertise routes. What that means is they constantly broadcast. They say this name is at this address at this port. And the routers watch for those advertisements. And when a request comes in, they will forward it to that host and port. That's true for TCP and for HTTP, right, with, with a couple of differences in the flows, but that's largely what happens. The container networking, it will, will allow you to get into the container through the router still by advertising routes. But what's more important is now the containers can talk to each other without going through the router. It's completely separate from the router. So for route services, the stuff that comes from the router still applies. You have the ability to receive the request, modify the request, state the request. But you don't have access to what's happening for container to container communication, only what's coming from the frontier. Right, the, like limits on the routing on the routing tier from the front end only apply to what the router receives and sends out, right? But again, if you don't want to use container networking, right, to, for the back end, you expose a route and you go through the front door. But then what you end up doing is you have you pay the price of coming through that round trip. So you now get to choose, right? You have flexibility that you didn't have before, which is a win. And if you choose to do your own rate limiting inside of your application or your container, you have that ability as well. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the things in the battery, so the question is exposing a container, um, not just other containers. That was basically the question, right? Yeah, so one of the things in the batteries included model that's being proposed right now is the IP addresses for the container are actually accessible from outside the container. I don't think that's something that necessarily um, you can rely on in all environments because as soon as you get a plug it in there, those IPs may not be accessible. Um, but again, it's going to depend on the, on the connectivity. The batteries, in, the batteries included version would do that. Anything else? Thank you. <laughs>